Today is August 31st, 2020. My name is Charles Souter. In the next five minutes, I'll be presenting a topic called decision making. In particular, the method is called satisficing. Main proposition is that you can make fast, good enough decisions with some quick comparisons. Most decisions don't require an elaborate decision making process. Most people know instinctively what they want, what they're willing to do to get it, and how to go about implementing their choice. But not always. Sometimes just a little more effort in making a decision can produce a better one. And sometimes when the decision is difficult, you must be willing to spend just a little bit more effort in making a choice, that, one that you can commit to. Because unless a decision is acted upon, it is not yet a choice. Satisfying is a decision-making process for choices of relatively low importance, such as where to go for lunch or what dress to purchase to wear to an event. However, any good choice will require that you have a minimum of these three types of information. First, you must know why you are making the decision. What needs are driving the motivation or reason why you must do something rather than nothing or to choose one alternative over another? Criteria are the factors that distinguish why one alternative is better or worse than another. Second piece of information, you must have more than one alternative available that satisfies an identified need or the reason for your making a decision. And third, you must be able to distinguish the relative goodness of each alternative on each criteria. The process begins by organizing the information as shown in this decision matrix. Notice that the criteria are in columns. And the criteria are rank ordered 1, 2, 3, 4 in importance. Now these criteria could be satisfiers or benefits or the reason or the needs that you need to make a decision or they could be dissatisfiers such as cost, distance, uh, service time, things of that sort. Alternatives are listed as rows. There are five alternative choices and your goal is to pick the best one. Now, these alternatives are rank ordered A through E according to the most important criteria. So alternative A ranks number one, as does number B. What this means is that they're both equally satisfying on this particular criteria. Alternative C is ranked two, D three, and E four. Notice that as you go to different criteria, the rank orders are going to be scattered because each alternative has some pluses and some minuses. For example, alternative E ranks best on criteria 2, alternative D ranks best on alternative 3, and of course on alternative 4 there are three alternatives that rank best overall. At this point what you need to do is begin the process of elimination. Begin with Criteria 1. Eliminate the least satisfying alternatives. In this case, Alternative D, which is ranked 3, and Alternative E, which is ranked 4, are eliminated. Then go to the next criteria. There are only three alternatives left, and of these three, you're going to eliminate the one that least satisfies Alternative 2. In this case, it's Alternative B. It's eliminated. Then you move to the next alternative. This will be the tiebreaker, alternative three. Which alternative A or C least satisfies alternative three? That would be alternative five. Leaving only one alternative left, which is alternative A. This will be your choice. This process can be simplified even further with just two criteria. The most important satisfier or benefit, and the most important dissatisfier or cost. Pick the two most 
preferred alternatives based on benefit. That means you're eliminating all of the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth and successfully least satisfying alternatives. That leaves you with just two alternatives. Next, eliminate the one with the highest cost or dissatisfier. This will leave you with just one alternative. One that ranks best on your benefit or your satisfier and the one that ranks best on dissatisfier. The key to good decision making is to eliminate the obviously poor choices so that only the good choices remain. Then pick one of the good choices. My final proposition is that when you have many good choices through the process of elimination, any one of them is good enough. That's all for now. Remember to stay positive. You'll be happier, healthier, and live longer.